Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate the concept of scope as it applies to variables. And we're going to be using C++ syntax, but if you use another programming language, the idea and the concept is still the same. The only thing that'll be different is just the language that's used in here. So to begin with, I have inside my main program, which is the first function that runs when you run a C++ program. It's going to create an integer called x and it's going to set that value equal to 5. And then we're going to print out to the screen where it says outside, meaning outside of this if block. We're going to print out what the value of x is. Then we have an if statement that says if it's true, which means true is going to make sure that this runs. So if this is true, it's going to run this block of code. And we're going to say, well, inside the block, x has this value. And then once this if statement finishes, we're going to print out the value of x again. So let's just see what this does when we run it as is. So as you might expect, outside the block, x is 5. Inside the if statement, x is 5. And then once we exit out of the if statement, x is still 5. So now let's do some other things with this and see what might have an impact on the scope of x. Now scope refers to the part of the program where a variable can be referenced or where it can be seen. So you can see that by defining and initializing this variable x, it's available throughout the entire main function, even within our if statement. Now what happens if I change the value of x inside the if statement? So I'm just going to say x equals 10, and then we'll print out the value, and then the value again. So let's see what happens now. So at the beginning, we print out x is 5, and then once it gets inside the block, x becomes 10, and then once the block ends, x is still 10. What if I reinitialized another variable in here called x? So I say int x is 10. Now let's run that and compare. Remember here it's 5 and 10 and 10. And now when we run it, it says x is 5. Inside the block, x is 10. And then after it finishes running, it goes back and it says x is 5. So what just happened here? Well, inside these curly braces, we initialized x equal to 10. So this is a different x than this x. We created and initialized x inside this block, right? So these curly braces define a block. So that means that this x is different than the x that was defined in main. So this was created here and only visible and available within the curly braces of our if statement. Once this finishes, it returns back out and it's, this is still displaying the value of this x. And you can even see here when I select this in this editor that it's highlighting the x that it's matching. So it helps this editor, this is Xcode, this helps us to be able to see that these are the same two variables and it even highlights this one. But you can see this one is not being highlighted. But if I click in here, you can see these two match and are not visible with the ones outside. So this X inside the, the if block is created in here and then as soon as this if block ends, this value of x is destroyed. So it can only be seen within this if statement. This variable is considered a local variable, meaning that it is only available within those curly braces and nowhere else. So it's called local. Now in contrast to a local variable, we can have a global variable. Now to create a global variable, we define that outside of the main function, and that will make our variable global. And global means it'll be available everywhere. 
So I'm going to do another x value just so that we can see where all of these are showing up. So I'm going to say x equals 44 just so that we have different values in here and we can kind of follow what's going on. So let's see what happens when we run this and I'm going to comment out the x value that's created inside main. So if we run this, we'll see that outside this x is the global value, which is 44. Inside the block, it's 10. And then outside the block, it goes back into using the global value. So now what if I'm inside here and I have a local variable called x, but I might want to use the global variable x. So how can we do that? We can see this is printing, this is already printing the local value of x. And if I want to uh, see the global, I'll do a C out and I'll say global X so that we can see. Now we still use the same variable name of X, but to refer to the global X, we put in two colons in front of it. So now you can see when I hover over this one, this editor again helps to highlight. You can see that this is highlighting this X so that I know this is the value that it's coming from. And this X and this one down here are also using the global value. So we can predict that it's going to say, you know, outside it's 44, inside X is 10, global is 44 and then down here it's going to say 44. So let's just run that so that you can see and verify where these values are coming from. Now what happens if I uncomment this one? Right, We have a global of 44 then another one inside main which is 5. So now if I click on this, we can see where these values of X are coming from. Let's run that so you can see. So it's this is using the value of X defined inside main, right in here, and as well as down here. But we're still saying specifically use the global value of X. So let me copy that and I'm going to put it down here after this one so that we can see x is 5 and see that it's still getting the global value in here. So where you define your variables have an impact on what its value can be and where in your program it can be seen. Now global might sound like a great idea. It might, it might seem like, well, I'm just going to create all my variables as global variables and then I don't have to worry about where they're seen. But it's not really a good idea and it's not considered good programming practice to do that. And that's because as you start to write functions and get more complex scripts or more complex programs, it becomes very hard to try to debug where the information is coming from and getting, getting set and getting changed. It also helps to keep your programs more modular if you're able to use local variables rather than global variables. Okay, so now let's see what it looks like when we're passing variables and working with functions. So I'm going to delete this if statement. I'm going to get rid of my global x variable. And I'm also going to get rid of these two lines. 
So we're just starting out with an X value and I'm also going to initialize a Y value. So we'll do 5 and 10. And then we'll print out those values so that we can see what we're starting with. So we'll say X is equal to 5 and then Y is equal to 10. So let's just run that, see what happens. So to start out with X is 5, Y is 10. Pretty straightforward stuff here. So now what happens if we pass this information into a function and we add it up and get the return, get the return total. So I'm going to create a function. So my function, I'm just going to, it's going to return an integer. It's just going to add two whole numbers. So I'm going to call it add values. And we're going to pass into this function x and y. So it's going to pass in an integer x, and it's going to pass in an integer y. Okay, then inside my function, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a variable called total and set that equal to x plus y. And then we want to return total. So after this gets x and y, it's going to return total from where it was called from. So let's call our function. We'll say add values. And you can see it's going to expect to take x and y. So I'm going to send in x and Y. And then since my function definition is after my main, I need to include a function prototype, which tells the compiler that, yeah, there's a function that's defined after main. So I'm going to paste that in, and then we put a semicolon at the end of the line. So let's just run that and see if everything compiles OK. So it's still printing x is 5, y is 10. <clears throat> and that's coming from this. And then we say, OK, go down here and add values and send it x and y. I'm going to total it up and return total. So now this gets sent back to here, but we didn't do anything to print out what the value is. So one common thought that especially new developers have is, well, I'm returning total, so I want to display total. So let's see out total. And we'll run that. And what we get is an error. It says undeclared identifier total. This has no idea what total is. Even though we're saying return it back up to here, this main part of our program doesn't know what total is. Total is initialized and created inside this add values function. So this is local to this function, meaning it's not available anywhere else. Even though we're saying to return that, it's actually returning the value of total, not the variable. So it's returning the value of total back up from where it was called from. So how do we accommodate for that? Well, you might be inclined to try to make it a global variable, but that's really kind of a last case scenario. What we do is we assign this function return, right? This is going to return an integer we want to create another variable that is equal to this. And that will grab the value and put it into that variable. So I'm going to say this is an int 
and let's say add total. So this is going to be an integer data type that is going to be assigned to the value that is sent when we return total. So the function is called here, passes in this information to the variable or to the function. Function uses these variables, adds them up, returns the total back up to here and gets assigned to add total. So now to print it out, I just use my variable name add total. Now let me run this. Okay, so x is 5, y is 10, they get passed in, our total is 15. So one of the methods of working with variables and having them go from one part of your program to another is by passing them in. And actually, this is the part of the function that passes in the value. So we're saying take x and take y and pass it into this function. Now it just so happened that I used x and y in here, but I could use different variable names. I could say that this is a and this is b, and then we're going to add a and b. So if I run this again, it still succeeds and it still gives me the right total. So what's happening is it's taking x, it's passing it into here and we're saying, okay, this is going to be called, we're changing the, the name of the variable to a and changing it to b. We're actually passing the value in and this is where we're naming the variable. Now we have this function prototype and actually we don't have to have the specific name in here. All we need to have is the data types that are being passed in in the function prototype. But they are required in the function definition. So let me run that again just so that you can confirm that once making these changes it still works the same way. So this is passing in the value. This is called pass by value. So it's sending the values in here. We're giving them different variable names and doing our little math and then returning the total. So that's an overview of using variables with scope and working with variables and scope in working with functions.